It's been a rocky year so far for Apple, with shares down over 10% since the beginning of the year. Can you see that steady decline right here on the screen? Well, the tech giant kicked off January with three downgrades. Redburn Atlantic, Piper Sandler, and Barclays, all citing fears surrounding iPhone sales. Well, those concerns persisted into March after the Justice Department sued Apple, claiming it's monopolizing the smartphone market. And Apple's China sales have also been a pain point with data out from IDC and CounterPoint Research, both pointing to double-digit percentage declines in iPhone sales in the region during the first quarter. So as the problems start to pile up and have piled up for that MAG7 stock, what can investors expect on earnings? May 2nd, Bob O'Donnell's tech analysis research president and chief analyst joining us now. Bob, it's great to have you here in studio. I'm going to join you in just a minute, but talk to us just about Apple, where we stand right now, and whether or not you think earnings next week are going to reassure and give co- and give investors back that lost confidence. Well, Sean, I mean, look, I think it's going to be tough. I mean, the reality is we've we've heard about those iPhone numbers in China. Uh, we're seeing a general trend towards uh, some challenges in the U.S. market as well for iPhone. You know, and iPhone has once again become a huge part of their business. For a while, obviously, it had declined, and now we've seen it grow again, and so. That's a big issue. Um, you know, unfortunately, the Vision Pro doesn't seem like it's exactly killing it. Yes, of course, there was a lot of excitement. You're going to expect that right away. But already, you've got fatigue from people who've bought it. Apparently, the interest in the stores has gone way down as well in terms of people coming in to try it. I mean, all of these things are, are factors we have to look at. Mac sales have been tough. Um, they did just announce an event where they're expected to unveil some new iPads. But, I mean, you know, it's an iPad. Like, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> That's what we've all been saying. It's Which an is iPad. why I didn't really react at all to that news much yesterday. No, exactly. So, I mean, you know, and so these are the issues. And, you know, look, in the past, I've, I've been watching and tracking Apple for a very long time. And they've always been able to pull a rabbit out of the hat yeah. somehow. Just like, you know, Musk amazingly pulled something yesterday for Tesla. And here we go. But, um, but the thing is, it's starting to pile up now, and it's starting to get a little bit harder, right? Between the iPhone sales, between the geopolitical issues in China, which is still a very big market for them, and now they're having to do a little bit more of what the Chinese government is requesting. Huawei is getting stronger in China. There's there's nationalistic movements there to try and pull some of the U.S. companies out. Um, you know, the car project was canceled, which I, I think in the long run was the right thing to do, but you know, it could have been interesting earlier if they kind of figured out a different path. Uh, you know, and of course, then Gen AI. What are they doing with Gen AI? That's what everybody wants to know. Now, we do expect that at the WWDC, their developers conference, they will absolutely have some news around what they're doing with Gen AI, both um, on the iPhone, in the Mac, and perhaps other types of services. And that's going to be important. And again, we've seen services as the driving factor for that business. It's grown as a percentage of the total. It's the most profitable segment, of course. So, uh, But at the end of the day, that services business is tied to the devices. And so if devices stall, at some point, services stall is, is the logic, mm-hmm. right? So. We'll see what happens. It's going to be, it's certainly going to be interesting to watch, but I have to say it's a little bit tougher this time around than I, I think it's been in quite some time. Well, what is the bigger headwind then for Apple? Is it that headwind from China or is it some of the lack of churn that we're seeing from U.S. consumers holding on to their iPhones for longer? Yeah, it's a good question, Mandy. I, I mean, I think it's a little bit of both, really, um, you know, because um, they, it all plays into it. Um, I think there's psychologically a lot of questions about China because Apple has made such a big deal of China, even if economically it's not quite as big as, as some of the other areas. So that's why it's kind of hard to, to put my exact finger on it. But yeah. it's they're all important issues. And you know, and again, as the the company that just kind of led all of us into this tech phenomenon that we've enjoyed over the last several years. It's, it's kind of tough to see this. So, you know, then you let's not forget all the stuff in the EU, the Justice Department, as you, yeah. as you mentioned. Um, you know, and I think there's some challenges there. And, and the thing that, that kind of drives me crazy is that I feel like there are certain things they could do to just appease some of those issues. Like, look, let people set up third-party app stores. Nobody's going to use them anyway, so who cares? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's certain things they, they could just do that would be, I think, psychologically, philosophically, a a right move, Mm -hmm. but 
you know, they're just a little stubborn in their unwillingness to, to make some of those kind of changes. So, Bob, it sounds like you might see a little bit more downside risk than ahead for the stock, given the challenges that are mounting. Is that right? I, I mean, it's you know, look, it's hard to say for sure, but uh, it certainly seems like signs are pointing towards it being a difficult quarter and, you know, not necessarily having a whole lot to count on, again, until WWDC. Mm -hmm. When that happens and we hear a new strategy for iOS, for Mac OS, uh, undoubtedly there'll be some Gen AI stuff. Maybe they're gonna do partnerships with Google, you know, for Gemini and or maybe other companies. All those things are interesting and could add some spice and, and vigor back into the into the stock. Bob, when it comes to Apple, they're largely v viewed right now as lagging behind the AI curve, at least when you compare it to many of the other Mag7 yeah. names. Is that the right way to view Apple at this standpoint? Absolutely, I mean, it, it just is. I mean, they have, intentionally kind of stayed away from it. You know, over the last couple of uh, earnings calls, they started to mention it. You know, they're, they're kind of working their way there and there've been a lot of hints coming um, that they do indeed have bigger plans for it. So, but they're absolutely much further behind than all the other folks. Mm -hmm. um, now, to be fair, I think they're gonna take a different approach. They're gonna focus a, a lot around what things can we do directly on the device. And that's a big picture trend I think we're gonna see for other smartphone makers from, you know, uh, uh, Samsung did this, we talked about this with Google, some of the things they're starting to do on their Galaxy phones. Um, Qualcomm's talked a lot about this with their the chips that are running in those Samsung phones. And they've got, of course, PCs coming out later this year right. that are expected to offer some of these capabilities. Uh, I'm going to Taiwan for the first time in forever to go to Computex because all these AI PCs mm -hmm. are gonna be there. So there's a lot of focus around that. And I think Apple's gonna think about doing AI on the phone, on the Mac, on the iPad, and, and they're gonna try and come up with the, you know, the unique Apple angles, which they're incredibly good at, to make it more relevant to average people. And so we're gonna, you know, that's gonna be a big one to watch and see what happens because if they can kind of figure out a way to explain this to people in a way that people are like, oh yeah, I gotta have this, yeah. it breathes new life into their products. Um, and it, you know, it reinvigorates things again. Mm -hmm. So that could be the, you know, the, the rabbit they pull out of the hat. So for the rabbit out of the hat, we have <laughs> Tesla doing it. Obviously, great news for them today. We have Meta reporting tonight. Help me tie together the narrative that we might see. Like if we get a huge surprise from Meta, how high does that raise the bar for Apple, which Tesla already did? Boy, that's hard to say. I mean, I you know, I think advertising seems to be doing reasonably well. I mean, the the bigger news that I'm watching from Meta is what how they just licensed the OS for their headset to other players. That's going to be really interesting. It's tiny from a monetary perspective. And then of course, they're doing a lot with their Llama models. They just released Llama 3. There's huge interest in that. And the question is, how do they start to monetize that? I think we'll eventually start to see some interesting new flows of income into the company outside of their traditional you know, advertising sort of stuff. So helpful, Bob. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, this guys. was great. Thank really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That was Bob O'Donnell, Tech Analysis Research President and Chief Analyst joining us in studio.